family tree. You can find it, just let them know who your family be. Yeah, Alex, genealogy. He'll teach you all the history. Alex, genealogy. He can solve everything, that's a mystery. Wanna know about your family and how it all started? Learn your roots in the history, the people of color. Tune in to the facts, it's a lot to discover. One grill got the answers to the question you're wondering. Yeah, class nine session, it's time to learn a lesson. Started from Louisiana, spread it out to Texas. Now the whole world searches senses on that session. So if it's something you're guessing, Alex here to help you. Welcome to the world of Alex Genealogy. So, pretty much, after the trip to Louisiana, I then began to question everything. I grew up with a lot of cousins, and of course I know my first cousins, but that's when I started to question. If I got first cousins, I got second cousins, and I got third cousins. So I then began to establish the relationship of the degree of how I'm related to people. So that kind of fascinated me and piqued my curiosity in exploring more about my other relatives. That's when I used to, at that point, I then began to get very, very close with my grandfather because I would ask him so many questions about the family. And he then would introduce me to some of his first cousins and second cousins and so on. And that's when I started to realize that some of the cousins that I grew up in Beaumont, I now can say we're related because of we're second cousins or we third cousins because our great grandfathers are brothers. See, a lot of people don't, I don't think a lot of people question that. All we know is a cousin, right? <laughs> <laughs> so after that trip, that's when I began to, I was actually introduced to Ancestry. My little brother, George Von Thomas, better known as Cal and Co. What he did, I guess he was on the computer, which I didn't like him to be on my computer anyway. But, you know, fortunately for me, while he was on the computer, he actually saw the advertisement of Ancestry.com. Now, I, I, I can't recall me ever knowing about the website. I, I, maybe I heard a little bit about it, but I really didn't pay attention to it. But he thought it was a great idea. Like, hey, bro, let's get on. Like, like, let's try to find, see what you can find on Ancestry because you're, doing, you're the one that's doing all the family research. And I can remember, also I can remember a question that one of my Lafleur cousins um, asked me, Destiny Fontenot. You know, her mom is actually LaFleur. She had asked me, what does LaFleur mean? And I can recall now, when I tried to search that up, I did see something about Ancestry.com. So now that, you know, my little brother bring this website to my attention again, I said, let me try this out. So I did, you know, I you know, created a username and I actually searched, you know, I'll show you here. I search. The first name that I searched was my grandfather's father. So I typed his name in. I knew his name was Alex. And I knew his name was, last name was LaFleur. Uh, where he lived, I put Louisiana. I, might, I didn't put the birth year. And I went to go searching. So when I went to go searching, it just really blew my mind that here is the website that popped up and because I asked my grandfather who was his grandmother I knew that this was my family now one of the things that interests me the most was the race now remember I was when I looked at the picture of this man I was confused because he looked at white to me so to see that his race was mulatto that really really confused me even more because I have never heard of that term before. So when I looked at that term mulatto, that's what made me become even more curious about, okay, what's this term? So I had to learn everything. But anyways, I saw that my ancestor actually spoke French. He was a farm laborer. And I just learned all these different details about him and his, you know, him and his parents. 
And then I saw all of the siblings of my grandfather. My grandfather told me about his, you know, aunties and uncles. And that's how I knew that this was my family. So after that, that's when Ancestry, you know, it'll tell you to put the family tree on there. And when I went to put the family tree, one of the most interesting things that Ancestry has is the fact that you had to find pictures of your relatives. Like you have to fill in the spaces. Like right now I have my home person is, is myself. It had You had to fill in the, 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 the pictures. So that's really what got me involved into wanting to know what my family looked like. And I had a fascination in, I need to put some faces. I need to put some faces to these names. And that's how I was able to obtain photographs of my family. So just about every single day that I was off, I just spent pretty much when I had free time, I would contact relatives and ask them about family photos. Now, before I had a scanner, I always used to bring my laptop and, you know, of course, my phone and had, you know, it was, they could take pictures of the family. I never forget, I came from, I went to one of my relatives' house and I asked them, could I see their picture so that way that I can have a copy of it. That person didn't let me get the picture, so I was like, you know what? I think I made something about me something that I can use when I go to my relative's house and I can actually scan photos. So that's when I came up with the concept of having a picture scanner anytime I go, I, go, I can go visit family members. So that way, I would be turned down for photos. So this, this right here is what initially started it's the reason why I have probably one of the largest picture databases in Louisiana, you know, as far as personal collection. And this is how I am able, I was able to pretty much preserve the photos of my family. And you know, actually, what really got me involved into the picture taking is that I was told that my great grandparents' home, I want to say they didn't catch on fire, something happened to the home, and we lost all of our family photos. So that kind of made me get involved with preserving the photos that I could find. So that way, if we have a hurricane, a uh, fire, or anything, or basically, you know, flooding that could destroy photos, I would have copies of these photos. I mean, look at these beautiful photos that, you know, are, are original photos. These are all original family photos. Lovely photos. You can see the variety and the diversity of the people. That's my grandparents. So I keep all of these safe in the bag. Repeats itself. I was bald when I was young, now I'm bald now. <laughs> so these are my original, this this my these are some from my original connection right here. And I mean my family actually shared these photos. Like that's how important, you know, a lot of my family members are with me. They actually given me copies of their original photos. Even the tent type. And you know, just, just to look at these beautiful pictures and to know the fascinating stories behind these people. So I'm gonna scan these photos so you can kind of see how 
good they come out. And I mean, this was a very long process of me doing this. Could you imagine me going through photo album after photo album, the amount of time, and you know, some of my family members just sitting there, you know, they open up their photo albums and be sitting there for two and three hours trying to figure out which photos would I like, uh, which photos they can identify. And that's also another uh, another good thing about this. While I was doing the research and meeting over meeting with my relatives, a lot of times they did not have the names written in the back of those pictures. Not everybody could read and write back then. So sometimes you would actually have photos that don't have anything on the back. So with me having the grandchildren of the people, or the children of the people, or the great-grandchildren that actually know who those people were in the picture, I was able to identify the people behind the pictures. So it's like I, I, I it's like I pretty much preserve everything, you know, the photo, the name of the person in there. This would really fascinate like my older relatives to see this being done. And back then, I really didn't pay attention to the type or the size. Although the picture was scanned, I then started to use a higher resolution. So that way, you can preserve the quality pretty well. You see how it went back? You see how a lot of people, you know, don't, don't pay attention to that. Like you have more image size. I can change that resolution because right now that was at the lowest. Let's do 600. So it'll be a pretty big photo, but the thing is, it's gonna scan it pretty well, and it's gonna bring out more details in the picture that you probably can't even look at when just by staring at the photo. And as you can see, I can basically crop out all of these photos to where they have individual shots. Now what I normally do, I would save this, this whole file as Whichever relative that I got it from, like right now, this is a, a, a mixture from different relatives. So what I would do, for example, I would put Betty Griffith scan one, so I could always know who I got the photos from. Out of time to accumulate such a large database that I now have. But it was well worth it because the irony of me doing this, this these photos that I have that my cousin gave to me, the community actually flooded. So everything else was flooded. So if I wouldn't have got those photos or I wouldn't have scanned them, I don't think the family seeing these photos so you see how you see how that works ironically enough the big flood that we had here in southeast southeast texas and louisiana a couple of years ago it literally flooded all the communities that i was researching so a lot of those families lost a lot of the photos that i have now so i, I, and, I and i shared that with a lot of people before i didn't think about it until you know it was actually going on i would always say you know, some family members don't want to share photos with me, but what would happen if you have a house fire or a flood or, or a natural disaster and you lose those photos? You can talk about the photos, but you're not going to be able to see those photos in, at, at all. So, you know, I kind of done like a, a, a big thing for the area and uh, of actually scanning communities of pictures. So you see this is a very large file, but when you click on them, you can look at the quality, the amazing quality that they have. And these are some very beautiful photos. So you can zoom in real good, it's still going to have a good quality because I scanned it in higher resolution. And when I do, after I get the photos, now this is the this is the interesting part right here. I have to then put the photos 
in locations within folders. You go to one folder, you go down, to another photo, photo album. So I have a lot of photo albums. I separate everything too, by the way. So you can see me, I know which families what I would put. Each family had their own photos. So you actually have photos inside of photos inside of photos. So just because you go to one photo, that's not everything. You gotta have multiple photos within the photo album. And, and, and it keeps going almost like this is a tree and you keep going beyond the folder that you see so I have a lot of stuff and you know all of this stuff is very organized for example I just went into the Natabello now you see how I went into the Natabello photo and as you can see you see more <laughs> folders so when you go into the photos I figured out a way if I'm looking for a particular family like if I'm with a family member I'm showing photos I have designed it to where I separated every family that is connected to this particular person into certain photos. So I know if I have a lot of photos of an ancestor, I'm going to create one folder. Like for example, I'm a descendant of Olympdenata, but at the same time, this is just all the general family of Olymp, but if I want to be more specific to my family. I want to go look at Olymp's daughter Ernestine and this is when you find all the photos of like my closer relatives. Makes sense huh? And these are just a lot of photos that I've scanned over the years so you know I, I literally have thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of photos. Not to mention records I do the same process for records as well. So I pretty much have my own courthouse on my laptop and that's why I have all the records separated so what I did the unique thing of what I did notice this is not in black and white like this is what the records look like after I get them after I purchase, purchase them from the courthouse so what I do because I know what those records look like in the courthouse just to kind of make it look uh, or more authentic I actually have a process to in which I color the records of how they would look in the courthouse and I use the Picasso and I've been using it for years let me show you an example of that I just scanned a record and I use some of my scans the original record so I'll take it and I just play around with the coloring boom and it looks just like the regular courthouse so that's how I pretty much know whenever I see things online and I see the records colored like this I would automatically know that the family member of or, or whomever possibly got the record from me originally so that's kind of like my little watermark that I never really mentioned to people because I don't think people question it because the record look so authentic you wouldn't question that wait a minute if he scanned this record how come it looks just like the original record and I've been doing that with the documentation for probably I want to say about at least 12 years like I as soon as I began to scan photos and documents I started doing this process. So it's something that I pretty much made a repetition of my research. I have decades and decades of, of records and I'm very organized too. Like all of these photos, even if the courthouse records, if it's just miscellaneous records or things that's going on or just random court cases, I actually have all of that separated. So as you can see, this is 340 items. So this is just 340 folders of information and things that went on. And I mean, I have a lot of content that I can share 
with the families. I mean, like death warrants, you know, what happened to some people when they died. I mean, when you really look at all of this stuff, I have pretty much my own courthouse within my database. This is how I'm connected. I can connect my family by posting these records online and sharing them with them and explaining them. And a lot of them are in French, too, by the way. So that's another thing that I had to do when I started to research was understand a lot about the French language. Like a lot of these records, even in English, you have to study the calligraphy because there were certain things that they did that we no longer have to worry about because we can type everything. But you have to learn the penmanship in this beautiful calligraphy. You have to understand and actually read all of this. Like I'll never forget the time I had one of the relatives to help me look at the records to archive them. And I sent him an old document. And it was actually in English. And I told him to type it up. He called me back immediately and said, hey, bro, I can't read it. <laughs> But I didn't think about it because I'm so used of looking at these old documents that it became a second language to me to even look at it. So that way, for example, this record is in French. So when I'm searching in the courthouse, I can easily scroll and I can see if they're gonna talk about slaves or anything. And it's hard to explain that in my mind, I would know what's going on just by doing this. But unfortunately, I cannot recite everything to, you know, just right away. But I know enough to look at what's going on and I can put that in my notes. So for example, Looking at this record, it gives the date that happened in 1854. And it's between my ancestor, Auguste Donata, the resident of the parish of St. Landry, who was selling to Achille Dupree from the secession of Lucine Donata. Slaves. Vincent, the Negro, aged about 38 years. Son of Desiree, a Negress, aged about 26, 26, and her three infants. Lali, a Negress, 8 years. Michelle, Garcon, 6 years and an infant, like I love this well, a la mal, basically an infant at the breast. Like the archivist at St. Andrew Parish, Mr. Keith Funtnow, he literally used to help me learn how to read this stuff in French to make sense of it. So he explained all of these things to me over the, over the years. So that's another interesting fact about my research was, I actually began my research in the era of when Keith Funtno was the archivist of St. Landry Parish Courthouse. That guy is phenomenal. In fact, the way he organized that courthouse was for genealogists. He had a passion for genealogy and history in general. So the way he done things in the courthouse, he began to translate the records and have everything on file so that way it's easy to locate the records. So if I would have started my research later than I did, I probably wouldn't even be reading or understanding a lot of what I have accumulated over the years. So Mr. Funtnow was a great help to me and others when it came to understanding the French language. And now I didn't got so good with genealogy I can actually look at these slaves, research their families, and locate them on Facebook. 
for example, I know that this is actually the Vincent family, and they also went by Mason. So one of the complicated things about slavery was that you had, they went, slaves, former slaves went by several different last names. In Louisiana, the slaves would typically take their father's or mother's first name and that would be their last name. And sometimes it's interchangeable. For example, if I'm dealing with somebody named Mason, then Mason has a son named Vincent. So now Vincent is gonna use Mason. But if Vincent's father name was something else, then sometimes the family would use that last name as well. So it's kind of complicated. So you know it's pretty it's pretty amazing at the fact that I can actually locate these people in which I have and that's what I can show you here so after I get all the information and I've obtained the information that's when I begin to make sense of it and try to identify what became of these people in these records so it's a long process so once I get the record that's when I make notes of the record now for example, Michelle, this is the this is what I did with my database. I took every slave record of my family and I put them in this and I explain who these people are and I write notes about the families. For example, this is the slaves of Martin Donata. So part of my project is an interest is to identify who were the people that my ancestor owned because my family was actually slaves on this plantation as well so it's like I want to understand and know who these people were as well and so you know I, have, I write notes and once I do identify them I actually write notes about it like for example this early record I know this was the marriage contract of my ancestors in 1803 this is what started the wealth of the family a guy most of the older slaves were from the nation from Africa so they have a guy nation of Congo and I explained the notes I was able to identify well, of course this bad grandma I was able to identify a guy as a guy Diane she had Lubin with Gregoire that's listed in this marriage contract as well as a son named Vincent Michelle whom she had with the Michelle listed in this contract. I was able to identify Lubin in the 1870 census living near Francois Bruce Donata. So basically, those notes is what makes sense of this. Remember how I said Francois Auguste Donata, and that's the notes to prove that I have successfully identified what became of the slaves of my ancestor. So I can explain, Lubin Gregoire's age matches that of the age given of the Lubin listed in his country, and from the surname he carried, I knew he likely obtained it from Gregoire. So this is, this is a lot of information right here. So for those people, now you have your ancestor and the nation of Africa in which they came from. So now I know that the Masons of Opelousas and the Vincents of Opelousas are actually descendants of Michelle who was from the nation of Congo. And then I go down and I go find the different family units and it's the same process over and over, you know, well, when I find a slave, I always bold their name because these people were important. So when I identify them, I enlarge their name to show the importance that, okay, I have successfully identified these people. They now are more than just how they were listed in the original records, which I can show.
original record look like the succession of Martin and Anna. So the same people that I mentioned, these are some of the people right here. The ones that I can identify like a guy. You have Mason. You see it's spelled different, it's song. So I have a pretty neat way of identifying these families. And once I identify, I write notes. I, I take every, I try to I find everything that I can on these families so I can learn who these people are. And if you go down, I have what you call family pedigrees. After I identify, I then turn that information into books. I'm talking about, I even have everything from the DNA to prove that I've, I've successfully identified these families. So you got, for example, the family of Vincent Michelle. So this is his family line. So his family members, I can actually reach out to their family members and let them know, hey, like some of the Hayes from the area. This is your family history and I know where your family origins began. So I think that's a pretty amazing thing that I'm able to make sense of these French documents, study them, study the, the slaves in the record, identify who they are, and could research extensively enough to where I am finding the living descendants of these people. So this is how I connect a lot of families on Facebook, and this all comes from the process of obtaining and preserving information on the families that I'm researching. Family tree. Alan Genealogy. We can teach you all the history.